Hi boys, this is a quick lesson on is, a, 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 a. Um, The simplest uh, way of translating these words is he, she, it. Okay, so in your books, uh, please write these notes down uh, and then you've got them all there to refer to. Now, uh, what we'd normally do is stick in a table and fill these in um, and I will send that uh, separately. But if you turn to page 162 uh, in your textbook, the whole table is there. So you've got the nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative, masculine, feminine, neuter, singulars and plurals of this word. Um, it's a very common word. If you think about it in English, we use this word a lot. We see him in the park. Um, we walk to the shops with her. Um, we bought it at the supermarket, etc. Um, so these little words uh, are just as common in Latin. Um, they are a little bit annoying because they're so small, uh, they're easy to forget, they're easy to miss out, um, and it's easy to kind of assume uh, what they mean without actually checking the table and checking what case, number and gender they are. So first things first, have a look at page 162 and either copy out that table uh, by hand into your books or um, stick in the table if you can print it out and fill in the gaps using page 162. Okay, so this is what the table should look like. Um, just have a little look at those endings first of all, uh, before we whiz on to some translation. Um, a lot of the, these endings are nothing new to us. So if you look at all the plurals, those plural endings are the same as any uh, noun plural endings. So for example, if you take these ones here, think about the noun servus. When that becomes plural, it goes servi, servos, servorum, servis, servis. Have a look at these ones. Think about the noun puella. Uh, when that goes plural, puellae, puellas, puellarum, puellis, puellis. Think about the neuter noun, templum. Uh, when that goes plural, templar, templar, templorum, templis, templis. So the plural endings are not new at all. We've seen them before uh, with nouns. Obviously, uh, that first column is masculine, so that would generally be the second declension. The second column is feminine, so that would be the first declension. And the third column is neuter, so that means it's the second declension, except um Instead of the plurals like this, as we know, remember, remember every day, they end in A. Okay, so let's look at the singulars now. Now, obviously, the words is, a, a, id are weird. There's no doubt about that. We have to learn that as a brand new thing. Look at the accusatives, though. The masculine and the feminine, very straightforward, end in M. The neuter, uh, although it looks weird, uh, just like any neuter noun, it's the same nominative as it is accusative. The genitives are strange, okay? Um, so, eos is obviously something that we have never really seen before. I-U-S on the end, eos, is actually quite a common ending uh, for the genitive singular of a pronoun, so of a little annoying word like this. Uh, quite often the, the ending of the genitive will be eos, I-U-S, and also quite often the dative will end in an I, just like that. Now, it seems simple because they're all the same, but obviously in some ways that makes it more complicated because what that means is eos, for example, could mean of him if it was masculine, of her if it was feminine, or of it if it was neuter. And that will again, as always, come down to context. Looking at the ablatives, they're pretty straightforward because we know that the ablative of servus, for example, is servo. The ablative of puella is puella. And the ablative of templum is templo. So those, again, are nothing new. So it's mainly that genitive and dative singular that you've got to watch out for. Okay, so we've just picked out five words from this table. First task, I want you to just look at these words and write down in your notes, under your table or next to your table, um, what case, number and gender each of them is. Some of them uh, may have more than one option. So eos has three options, ae has four, aes has six, aas thankfully has one, and aorum has two. Okay, pause this video, write down for each of them what case, number, and gender they could be, um, and then once you press play, I will reveal the answers. 
Okay, so eos can be genitive, singular, but then the three options are that it can be masculine, feminine, or neuter. Okay, ae can be dative, singular, uh, masculine, feminine, or neuter. So that's three options, but there's also a fourth, we're over here. So it can also be nominative, masculine, plural. Okay, I'm going to move these down so that I've got a bit more room. So ace, we needed six options for this. Okay, so this one can be dative or ablative, plural. And the reason it's six options is because it can be masculine, feminine, or neuter. Okay, so look here, six whole options for AES. So that will be really important uh, to consider context. AAS has just one option. So that one is feminine, plural, accusative. Okay, and then the last one, AORUM, with its two possibilities, can be genitive, plural, and then it's either masculine or neuter. Okay, let's have a think about how we might translate some of these words by doing a little bit of English into Latin. So if you add um, these words underneath in English, to her, they, if it was going to be masculine, nominative, plural, okay, her, if it was going to be accusative, them, if that is feminine, accusative, and obviously plural, and then it in the nominative. So look back at your table, think about how you might say each of these in Latin, and then I'll reveal the answers once you press play. Okay, so to her is a because we need the dative singular. They, masculine nominative plural, is ae as well, confusingly. Uh, her accusative is am, got to end in m. Them, feminine accusative plural, is as. And it, nominative, obviously going to be singular, is it. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to work through a few examples for you so you can see how these words work within a sentence. Um, so write these out and then write the translations underneath. So firstly, pueros inveni eos ad regem duxi. So inveni, it ends in an I. Okay, so it's I found, perfect tense. Pueros, the boys, et and duxi, I led. And then eos is your little annoying word here. Um, eos, if we look back at the table, we can see it's masculine, accusative, right here. Um, so it must be a masculine group of people. We've already been told that we found some boys, so I found the boys and led them to the king. Okay. The second one, vidimus, we saw. And then we've got an accusative am here. Okay, so we go back up. Am is right here. Feminine accusative, so it must be a woman. So we saw her in Horto, in the garden. Okay, and then the final one, ea non audivi. So audivi, I heard, but I non, I did not hear. And then we're left with ea. Okay, now ea, it could be feminine nominative right here, uh, but that wouldn't make an awful lot of sense um, because We've said I already, we know the nominative is I. So it can't be a I heard her because then she needs to be accusative and A I can't be accusative. But A I can be accusative right here if it's neuter plural, okay? So the only way that this would make sense, I did not hear something that's accusative obviously because it's, well, it's being not heard in this case. So if it's neuter plural, 
we can just say those things because things are just generic plural neuters okay so on page 163 you have exercise uh, 533 which looks like this okay i'm going to give you a few clues and then i want you to make sure uh, that you've completed that and sent it back to me okay so here we've got aos that is just like this aos right here so it's masculine accusative and it's plural okay here Aya. Now think about this one because possum is I can. Okay. A lot of boys have translated Aya here as she, but it can't be she can because then it would be potest. We can't say she, I can, because that would make no sense. So think about what case that could be instead of being feminine nominative. Think about what else uh, it could translate as. Okay. Look back in your table, see where else Aya appears and what would make most sense. Aes, there's six options there. Decide which is the best one for the translation of that. Aas, watch out for that one. It's plural. Aos is this weird genitive. Now, this will translate as of something, but remember, you can change that round to make it sound nicer in English, so just bear that in mind. Number six, I'm not going to talk about the aorum. It's genitive plural, but you can deal with that. I'm going to talk about this word here, que. Just think about how you translate that. The biggest clue here is fish, chips, que. Translate to fish and chips. So consider that as you're translating. Number seven, ar is here. And it comes after the word come. Come means with. Think about what case is likely to follow with. Okay. Number eight, I'm going to leave to you to figure out. That one's quite straightforward. Number nine, sorry about the capital N. My computer doesn't understand Latin. Um... Ah, I've made a mistake here. Sorry, I haven't typed it out very well. Uh, so that should be nunc eum ad regem trahemus. Uh, again, that one's quite straightforward, but just watch out for the tense of this verb. Okay, and then number 10, uh, your pronoun here is ae. So think about what case that is. Also think about the translation of this. Be careful with this word. People quite often get it confused. Okay, so that's on page 163, exercise 533. Good luck, guys.